I tell you, just when I think I'm running out of content, things like to pop up, good and bad. So I'm heading over to the Mitsubishi dealership and I'll let you guys know what's going on. So earlier this morning, I went to start my car. Everything was fine and dandy. However, if you guys will notice, my radio isn't turning on and neither is my AC. So right now I'm gonna go ahead over to our local Mitsubishi dealership. I'm gonna pick up a part install it if it works i'll let you guys know what happened i did some of my own troubleshooting checked all my fuses my relays everything looked fine and dandy in the engine compartment bay down here and then i even checked fan motor itself and everything looked solid but on my way to the dealership i am realizing that the car is driving really weird so when i come to a stop it'll hover at like 2000 rpms which is not normal very shaky shifts so i'm just gonna drive it kind of like a baby the dealership's literally only about like another half mile away from the house so that was a risk i was willing to take nothing too crazy but hopefully this part fixes everything Let's see if i can get it on camera for you then it drops definitely weird Okay, back in the car from a quick little trip to the parts store at Mitsubishi and $52.17 later Here is our part and the mysterious part everybody was asking about is the fusible link So it's gonna sit up by the battery I'll show you guys once I get home as you can tell my day has drastically made a 180 and that is thanks to Greg He's a member of rally revolution on Facebook. So if you guys aren't part of that group I highly suggest following them following them there's a lot of knowledge in there a lot of nice builds it's just a good group to be a part of it's no shaming or bashing it's a really good group to be honest but yeah thanks to greg he actually mentioned about checking on the fusible links so that is a little linkage system of fuses above the battery i'll show you guys in a second so lo and behold i went to go check it and yeah a fuse was blown on there i kind of overlooked it i looked at that previously but there's a little hidden part that i missed so I'll go ahead and show you guys that, but Mitsubishi locally had it in stock. And then by luck, they actually had one left. And this was actually put on order from one of the workers at the parts store for his Evo. So I felt kind of bad stealing it from him, but uh, he's like, no, it's totally fine. I can get them all the time. So um, yeah, this is a lot better to pick up from the Mitsubishi store. That way I don't have to wait a couple weeks to get this part in. So let's go ahead, pop the hood, and I'll show you guys where this is located. Okay, so real quick. Here is that fusible link that I'm talking about. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and remove your snorkel, disconnect the battery, and then it'll give you access to behind here. So yeah, there you go, there are all your fuses. And when I first checked this, I was just looking at these little zigzags. I did not notice that that's where our brake is right there. So keep in mind this is a genuine OEM part from Mitsubishi. Here is your part number right there, 8571-Alpha-019, fusible link, box fusible link. So there you go. Let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, so we'll go ahead and give it a nice little inspection. As you guys can see, everything is intact the way it's supposed to be. And lines up, lines up with the other one. So pretty much the exact same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and bring over that terminal area, just connect all those harnesses and get them back on. Just to make life a little easier, we're gonna remove this battery. There we go, so much more room for activity. Now, do you guys wanna take a guess on what size, what size those nuts are? Go ahead, take a wild guess. It is a Mitsubishi. <laughs> but yes, they are all gonna be 10 millimeter, so. Should be straight and easy, simple swap over. I will say it's torqued on there pretty good. But let's also not forget which ones go where. Red and black, red, white, and black. That's gonna be the order we need to assemble it onto the new one. All right, so now that those four terminals are removed, come over, there's two more. So of course, one's gonna come up here, and then here is the other one. And again, these look like 10 millimeters. Oh. Jeez, I should probably wear some gloves before I bust my knuckles. 
All right, one down, one more to go. And you know what? Of course, this is gonna be a different size. This might be a 12 mil. Called it, so there you go. The one towards the battery terminal, and that's gonna be your 12 millimeter. Okay, threw the gloves on, still couldn't get it off. That thing's on there like a motherfucker. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is put the battery back in place. We're gonna put that on the terminal. We'll see if that can kind of hold it in its position to kind of break it loose. Okay, plan B. So we got everything tightened down, mounted up right there. Come on. As you can see, that's just spinning on the terminal. So we're not gonna do that. You know, just when you think you have it all figured out, your car comes up with some new type of shit. All right, so I'm gonna use some good old PB blaster. See if we can break anything loose on there. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much farther I can go after this. Hopefully that eats away something in there. Okay, so I just managed to break it loose. So the thing was, there was nothing to really use as leverage to kind of hold this in place. Everything in here is like rubber or plastic. So what I actually ended up doing was just going towards the the floor of this battery holder. I don't know what you want to call this thing. And basically pinned it down and was able to break it loose after that PB blaster. So that's going to be your best bet. Hallelujah, finally off. <laughs> Go ahead and keep that one there for now so I know where it belongs. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison. Here is the new one. As you guys can see, all the fuses are intact. Here is the old one with that top one being busted. There you can you can see it's not even making contact. I tell you, for somebody that has back problems, this is not the best car to be working on. My whole lower back is like super tight right now. But uh, yeah, we're pretty much almost done. I throw this battery back in. Fingers crossed everything boots back up the way it's supposed to. If not, I really don't know what to do. All right, so new fusible links, batteries all hooked up again. Um, let's go ahead and try to run her up. Fingers crossed, please, that everything works fine. Flickered. All right, so that works. Radio seems to be working. And... Oh, yes! Yes, we are in business. Okay, so my day has totally turned around. I feel amazing right now. Greg, huge shout out to you. Thanks so much. Um, you saved your boy a lot of money and a lot of heartache. Definitely check out Rally at Revolution. Proof is in the pudding right here that you may not know everything, but somebody in a group form may know and they'd probably help you out. So the whole point of me showing you guys this video is everybody does have their trial and error. Not everybody knows everything. And uh, just this community alone of the Rally, everybody's so helpful. So. I just really appreciate everybody from the comments, from Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all that all that stuff. Everybody's knowledge kind of put together is pretty awesome. So that's why I kind of YouTube too as well. So now I'm not the only one that's ever going to have this issue. So if you guys ever do stumble upon it, now you know how to go ahead and fix it. Save yourself some money. Save yourself the heartache and headaches. So there you have it. That's how you go ahead and change your fuse links on a 2008 and above, I'm assuming, Lancer, Rally, or an Evo. But as always, I want to say thanks for watching. Never live your life on idle, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.